Let's imagine at an arbitrary time t, an object has moved from somewhere to this current location with the current orientation. And after a very short time period dt, it has moved to this new location with the new orientation. As you can tell, this object has both translated and rotated within this plane, and we learned already that the combination of both translation and rotation is known as the general plane motion. To study the general plane motion, let's focus on the motion of two arbitrary particles in this rigid body, particle A and particle B, which have moved into these two new locations. During motion, the displacement of particle A is vector dRA, and the displacement of particle B is vector dRB. And the initial relative position of particle B relative to particle A is RB relative to A, and after the motion, the relative position of particle B is RB relative to A prime. Since general plane motion is the combination of translation and rotation, we can assume this motion happens in two steps. The first step is translation, during which point A has moved to its new location. If you recall, during translation, the displacement for all particles in this rigid body are all the same. Therefore, the displacement of point B is the same as the displacement of point A during this first step. And also, the relative position of point B relative to point A stays the same as well. For the second step of the motion, the object rotates about a fixed axis that is perpendicular to this plane and passes through point A with an angular velocity of omega and angular acceleration of alpha. This completes the general plane motion during this period of time dt. Now, particle B has a new relative position with respect to A, and the change in its relative position is represented by vector drb slash A. And from vector addition, we know that the displacement of particle B drb equals to dra plus drb slash A. If we take the time derivative of this equation, we get this equation for linear velocities for any two arbitrary particles in the same rigid body undergoing general plane motion. It says that the absolute velocity of particle B equals to the absolute velocity of particle A plus the relative velocity of B with respect to A. As you can tell, the velocity of particle B has two contributions. VA represents the contribution from the first step of the motion translation. And VB slash A represents the contribution from the second step of the motion rotation. And from what we've learned before, for rotation about a fixed axis, the linear velocity of any point equals to the cross product of omega and its position vector with respect to the center of rotation. Therefore, for a rigid body undergoing general plane motion, the absolute linear velocity of particle B can be determined as the absolute linear velocity of particle A and the cross product of omega, the angular velocity vector of this rigid body, and RB slash A, the relative position vector of particle B with respect to A. Similarly, if we take the second time derivative of this equation, we get this equation that relates the linear acceleration of two arbitrary points in the same rigid body undergoing general plane motion. Again, the linear acceleration of particle B can be determined through two contributions. AA, which is the linear acceleration of particle A, represents the contribution from translation. And this term right here, the relative acceleration of B with respect to A, represents a contribution from rotation. And we have already learned that for rotation about a fixed axis, the linear acceleration has two components. One is the tangential acceleration. The other one is the normal acceleration. 
Therefore, combining all these, we can write this equation to determine the absolute linear acceleration of a particle B in the rigid body through relative motion. Remember, you can write these two equations for any two arbitrary points that belong to the same rigid body undergoing general plane motion. When you are writing these two equations, you would always choose a reference point. In our case, we choose point A to be the reference point. And the relative position vector is always drawn from the reference point. It is the relative position of point B with respect to the reference point, point A. On the other hand, if we choose point B to be the reference point, and from here we can draw the position vector from B to A, which represents the relative position of A with respect to the reference point B, then from here we can write the two equations that will enable us to find the linear velocity and linear acceleration of particle A. During problem solving, of particular interest are points that belong to more than one rigid body. Normally, those are points of joints. Like in this case, point A belongs to not only rigid body AB, but also rigid body AC. Therefore, its linear velocity and linear acceleration can also be determined through rigid body AC. Here, RA slash C is the relative position of A with respect to reference point C. During problem solving, this provides the additional equations we need in order to solve the problem. Let's look at this example. Rod AB, rod BC, and collar C, they are connected together. Collar C slides along the horizontal direction, and its velocity and acceleration are given. And from here, we need to solve the angular velocity and angular acceleration of rod BC. If we analyze the motion of the three components in this system, Collar C is doing translation. Rod AB is rotating about a fixed axis that passes through point A with angular velocity of omega B AB and angular acceleration of alpha AB. Rod BC is doing general plane motion, which is a combination of translation and rotation with angular velocity of omega BC and angular acceleration alpha BC. And since point B and point C belong to the same rigid body, BC, therefore we can apply these two equations that relate the linear velocity and linear acceleration of these two points B and C. Therefore, as you can tell, in these two equations, these are the unknowns we need to solve for. Since point B also belongs to rod AB, which is doing rotational motion about a fixed axis that passes through point A. From there, we can actually determine the direction of the velocity of point B, which should be perpendicular to rod AB. Therefore, let's set up our XY coordinate system. Let's look at rod AB first. And for rotational motion, the linear velocity of point B as a vector is determined as the cross product of omega AB, which is the angular velocity of rod AB, and the position vector, which can be determined. And don't forget, omega AB has a component of k. Therefore, from here, although we cannot determine the magnitude of velocity of point B, we can at least determine the direction of this velocity vector. And then, because point B also belongs to rod BC, which is going through general plane motion, we can write this equation that relates the linear velocities of point B and C, substitute in VB as determined from the previous step, and also the relative position vector of point C with respect to point B can be determined from the geometry. Substitute that in and organize. We can get this expression for the linear velocity of point C in Cartesian vector form with two unknowns, omega AB and omega BC, which are the magnitudes of the angular velocities of rod AB and rod BC. However, the velocity of color C is given, which is 2i in the Cartesian 
vector format. Therefore, the vector equation becomes two scalar equations, one for the i components and one for the j components. And from here, we can solve for both unknowns, which are the angular velocity of rod AB and the angular velocity of rod BC, which is what we were asked to solve. The negative sign here indicates that the rotation of rod BC is clockwise. To find the angular acceleration of rod BC, we're going to use a similar approach by recognizing that point B belongs to not only rod BC, but also rod AB. And since rod AB is doing rotation about the fixed axis that passes through point A, from here we can write the linear acceleration of point B in terms of these two components, the tangential acceleration and normal acceleration, substituting all that we know. And we get this expression for the linear acceleration for point B with only one unknown, which is alpha AB, the magnitude of the angular acceleration of rod AB. But because point B also belongs to rod BC, which is doing general plane motion, we can write this equation that relates the linear acceleration of both point B and point C and substitute in all that we know. And we get this expression for the linear acceleration of point C, which contains two unknowns, the magnitudes of the angular acceleration of rod AB and rod BC. However, the acceleration of point C is given, which is, in the Cartesian vector form, negative 10i. Therefore, once again, the vector equation becomes two scalar equations, and two equations, two unknowns, we can solve for both unknowns. And this is what we are asked to solve, the angular acceleration of rod BC. And it is positive, which indicates that the angular acceleration is counterclockwise.